but this one works. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to Worship at Kavit Site on this 19th Sunday after Pentecost, and another beautiful day we've got. Did anybody, how many of you saw the sunrise this morning? It was beautiful and coming through the trees. Everything was all lit up. It didn't last long, but it sure was pretty. Uh, welcome to those who are joining us online on the Kvitside Facebook page or website. Uh, Kvitside memorabilia items and an updated church history book are still available in the, on tables in the back. And all items are free for the taking. <clears throat> Kvitside history items are still displayed in the fellowship hall for you to look at if you want to go down. Thank you to the kids for singing today. We're glad to have you here. Confirmation class will meet tonight at 7 here at church. Deacons and trustees will meet Wednesday night. Are there any other announcements? Our opening hymn is Rise Up, O Saints of God. <clears throat> Is this working? Oh, hey. Good. And I think something was really wrong. <clears throat> Pray always. Do not lose heart. This is Christ's encouragement in the gospel today. Wrestle with the word. Remember your baptism again and again. Come regularly to Christ's table. Persistence in our every encounter with the divine will be blessed. <clears throat> our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Sisters and brothers, let us worship God. <clears throat> in spite of our best efforts to live faithfully, we fall short of what God intends for us. Because God has already promised to be merciful, we dare to tell the truth about our lives. In humility and trust, let us confess our sin. God of grace, for our failure to love others as you have loved us. Forgive us. For wasting your gifts and hoarding our goods. Forgive us. For losing heart and abandoning hope. Forgive us. For all the ways we turn from you. Forgive us. We offer our prayers in the name of the one who saves us, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Grace flows like a river, mercy like a never-ending stream. Believe the good news, in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Amen. Our next hymn is, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, <clears throat> have mercy on us. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O oh Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Let my mouth be full of your praise. And your glory all the day long. Every day will I bless you. And praise your name forever and ever. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation. O hope of the ends of the earth and of the seas that are far away. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is with me. Bless God's holy name. You redeem my life from the grave. And crown me with mercy and steadfast love. Lord, hear my prayer. And let me cry, come before you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. O Lord God, tireless guardian of your people, you are always ready to hear our cries. Teach us to rely day and night on your care. Inspire us to seek your enduring justice for all this suffering world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our next hymn is Day by Day.
Our first lesson today is from Genesis 32, verses 22 through 31. Returning to the home he had fled many years before, after stealing his brother's birthright and his father's blessing, Jacob wrestles all night long with the divine adversary, who ultimately blesses him and changes his name to Israel, a name that means he wrestles with God. Beginning at verse 22. The same night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. <clears throat> when the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. Well, now read Psalm 121 responsibly. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved, nor, with, nor will the one who watches over you fall asleep. Behold, the keeper of Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord will watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. At this point, the kids are going to sing for us, followed by the children's sermon.
Well, thank you for singing. That was great. Glad to have all of you here today and, and singing so loud. So just before you sang, we heard a psalm that can help us understand that God is with us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, in the middle of the dark night and in the midst of the sunniest day. And it's Psalm 121, and this is a little different version. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my, does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. So is there any time that God is not watching? Nope. 24-7 pretty much covers it. And now and forevermore covers a long time, doesn't it? Are you afraid of anything? Oh, he's afraid of losing his game. Are you like do you are you afraid of the dark? Or something under your bed or in the closet? Or in the basement? Nope. <laughs> this psalm reminds us that even when the rest of the world is asleep, God is on the job protecting, loving, and caring for us. Do you remember a time when you knew God was with you even when you were afraid? Or lost or alone? Well, God is with us all the time, no matter what we do. Let's pray. Repeat after me, kids and adults. Dear God, I know you are with me when I am asleep, when I am scared, when I am sad or happy. And even when I forget you are with me, Thank you for taking every step with me. Thank you for loving me. Amen. You can go back to your seats. Our second lesson today is from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through chapter 4, verse 5. The writer of this letter continues his instruction of Timothy, his younger colleague in ministry, by emphasizing the importance of faithful teaching despite opposition. Beginning at verse 14. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so, this everyone, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead? And in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable, convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with a sound doctrine, but having itchy ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to the mess. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus tells a parable of an unjust judge who is worn down by a widow's pleas. Jesus is calling God's people to cry out for justice and deliverance. For if an unethical judge will ultimately grant the plea of a persistent widow, how much more will God respond to those who call? Beginning at verse 1. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. The Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says, and will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. The life of faith isn't easy. Martin Luther, who we'll hear more about in a couple weeks, his wife Katie, before her marriage, was smuggled out of her convent among herring barrels. She then endured a difficult life as an outlaw's wife during the time Martin Luther was considered an outlaw from the church for his teachings. She provided meals and beer for hundreds of guests at the Black Cloister and almost single-handedly ran and improved the estate as a home base for the Reformation movement, despite wars, plagues, and bad harvests. Mary Magdalene traveled with Jesus, supported him financially, observed his murder at the hands of the Romans, and then witnessed his resurrection. She was one of the first apostles to tell of the risen Lord, only to be discounted by Jesus' own disciples. No, the life of faith isn't easy. Instead, it is a long faithfulness of wrestling with God and with humans. In today's text, we have two stories of faithful wrestling with God. In the first lesson from Genesis, Jacob wrestles with a strange being that is at once a man and recognized as God. So what's the context of this scene? Twenty years earlier, Jacob had fled from his brother Esau's murderous rage after stealing his birthright. And a few days before this story, Jacob had fled from his evil trickster father-in-law. He was on the run and afraid. Jacob knew he was about to meet his brother, but he didn't know if Esau still wanted to kill him. Still, Jacob obeyed God's order to return to the land. While he was faithful to what he had been told, it often put him at odds with men in his family. Fearing Esau, Jacob sent his flocks, herds, 15-member family, and numerous servants ahead of him so that no one else would be harmed. As Jacob slept alone on the far side of the Jabbok, he must have been wondering where, what all this faithfulness had gotten him. And at just that time, a mannish person attacked and wrestled with him. This wrestling lasted all night. As Jacob was repeatedly pushed down into the ground, he refused to give up, even after his hip was dislocated. He had a very uncomfortable night, to be sure, yet Jacob hung on to his mysterious adversary until he received a blessing. His name was changed to Israel because he wrestled with God and with humans and won. Jacob's life was long and difficult, yet he continued in his long wrestling match with God and with humans. <clears throat> Years later, Jesus told a parable to encourage his followers to be as persistent as Jacob in their wrestling with God through prayer. 
He told of a widow who wanted justice and the evil judge who intentionally denied her request. Nevertheless, the widow didn't stop demanding justice from the evil judge who eventually relented and stopped supporting wickedness. The widow wrestled with the corrupt legal system and a judge intent on blocking her rights over the one who opposed her. She kept wrestling with humans, even from a position of low societal empowerment and without anyone to advocate for her in her widowhood. Eventually, she did win. The Jewish tradition and tra teaching and tradition placed an emphasis on treating the widow and orphans and strangers with extraordinary compassion and justice. Widows were thoroughly marginalized in ancient society given the patriarchal culture that given so governed society and as such were likely seen as charity cases. What Jesus does in this parable is challenge this assumption of the helpless widow, giving her agency and authority to challenge corrupt power. This perspective is in line with the Hebrew tradition seen in Deuteronomy 16, where exhortations are made for judges to render just decisions for the people. In addition, an emphatic call is issued, justice and only justice you shall pursue, so that you may live and occupy the land that the Lord your God is giving you. And that's in Deuteronomy 16. <clears throat> This demonstrates that pursuing justice, and especially in relation to the widow and other vulnerable populations, was a necessary part of what it meant to live ethically in relation to God and each other. All this context sets up this parable for a number of profound and glaring contrasts. The unjust judge being contrary to the call to be just and impartial the widow ex exerting authority in her self-advocacy, and the merciful response of God in response to the judge. The takeaway is that justice is central to living prayerfully before God. Last verse in the gospel today is, and yet when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? So what is faith that Jesus talks about? The word faith is used by all kinds of Christians in all kinds of circumstances. There are many things that people think faith means, but not are all on the same page as what Jesus means. So for those committed to the way of Jesus, what is faith? Where does faith come from? What is faith supposed to do? How is faith being displayed in the parable of the persistent widow that Jesus seems to be alluding to? For those committed to the way of Jesus, what is faith? Theologian Mildred Bangs Winecope writes, Faith is not a thing which stands alone in human experience. Faith is always entangled with other values like love, holiness, and obedience, and does not exist outside of or, or away from those Christ-like qualities and others like them. In this sense, faith is not something that someone has and that they choose to go out and find it and take it for themselves, adding to a list of other self-identifiers. So where does this faith come from? Since faith is not something we pick for ourselves, perhaps we can view faith as something built up and developed within us by a force outside of us. Surely, then, faith is something planted, watered, grown, and pruned in us by the Holy Spirit when, and only when, we fully consecrate ourselves to the Lordship of Jesus Christ in our lives and in the world. What is faith supposed to do? The wine coop identifies faith as some kind of internal catalyst which influences and produces certain behaviors when she says love is a byproduct of faith. Again, we see that faith is not a thing in and of itself which can be worn as some kind of badge of honor, but rather it is some kind of internal condition that produces faith in line with Christ-likeness. 
The Apostle Paul encourages that through the Spirit, by faith, we eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, the only thing that counts is faith working through love. Faith allows us to wait patiently. Faith works itself out through love. Faith produces behaviors that keep us in step with the will of God. How is faith being displayed in the parable of the persistent widow that Jesus seems to be alluding to? The faith built up over time in the life of the widow poured out into the acts of devoted prayer and the patient pursuit of justice in the face of opposition. She was sure of what she was hoping for and driven by what she has not yet received. All along the way, drawing from the well of steadfast faithfulness deposited to her by God. All too often in our world, the concept of faith is used as some kind of tool to produce some kind of tale about a person's values or convictions. Many people literally say they are a person of faith and let those listening fill in the gaps, and they do. To Weinkoop's point, when faith is treated as a thing, it is no longer faith, at least for those who follow Jesus. And of course, perhaps in its most reliable form, faith is to be made evident and worked out through our visible lives. Steadfast devotion, patient obedience, the graceful following through a spirit-led conviction. These are the marks of faith. The life of faith certainly isn't easy. Instead, it's a long, uncomfortable wrestling match. The good news is God is our supporter. God will always be with us. God has promised to be our helper. Amen.
Please rise. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. You may share a sign of peace with others, and if they're comfortable, you may shake hands. If not, you can just do the peace sign or something. Peace, Judy. Peace, John. Peace, Nancy. <clears throat> You may be seated. This is the point in the service where we usually receive the morning offering. We're not passing the plates. You may leave your offering in the plates on the table in the hallway or on the table in the narthex. And thank you for your support of our church. We sing our offertory response. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Eternal God, may these gifts be signs of your grace, and may our lives show forth the coming kingdom that when Christ comes again, he will find faith on earth. Amen. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. For all the baptized, that they become skilled in compassion and grace and equipped to share the good news with all. Grant your followers persistence in proclamation and prayer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For air and sky, clouds and sun, that they provide rain to parched land and relief to flooded ground. Empower us to be worthy stewards of creation. We pray for favorable weather for harvest, and for safety for all working to bring in the crops and prepare the land for next year's crop. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For judges, juries, and all who work in the judicial system that they desire wisdom, seek truth, rule with fairness, and have the courage to do what is right. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For those in need that they may be filled. Send healing to all who suffer. Today we pray especially for Laura Wood, Larry Molden, Rod Olson, Ron Street, Margaret Kelm, Bruce Kelm, those undergoing and recovering from surgery and medical tests and procedures, and those we now name in our hearts. Comfort families who have lost loved ones. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those who have no one else to pray for them. May they sense your light, love, and grace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For those who have taught us faith and now rest in your heavenly peace, that we remember and give thanks for these saints who shared the gospel through word and deed. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Be of good courage, for the Lord will keep our going out and our coming in from this, day on, this time on and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is On Our Way Rejoicing.
Go in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks be to God. Thank you for coming and have a good week.